And they don't have to wait a year. They can sell it the next day if they had gone to Europe and they had a buyer over there who's not a U U.S. Uh, resident, right? If you liked this video, click below. And if you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe and then remember to click the little bell icon so you get notifications. Enormous uh, concentration of power. Democracy, poverty reduction, and cryptocurrency. Are you sophisticated enough to um, invest in uh, securities? Bitcoin is actually a reversion to commodity money. Decentralized social networking. What if um, you're selling to non-U.S. investors? So it sounds like, going back to Reg D, it's not just about selling to non-accredited to accredited investors, if you're doing public solicitation. It's not just that you're selling to accredited, but they have to hold it for a year. Uh, is that mostly correct? They'll have to hold it for a year before they can use rule 144 or some other way to resell to someone else. Mm -hmm. Except in the case of secondary sales under Reg S. So now we go back to rule 904, which is what I started 903. 904 pr provides sort of a, an, an exemption for that. It says, yeah, you may have sold to an, an American under 506B, 506C, or some other way, and US American. And now, a month later, they found a, a buy, they went to Europe or whatever, the offer was made overseas. They can, they don't have to wait a year. They can sell it the next day if they had gone to Europe and they had a buyer over there who's not a U US uh, resident, right? Yeah, well, it's, it's actually a 40 day um, holding period. I mean, the, the, the thing is, if, uh, if, if it's all already been held, held a year, then you can rely on a number of different things, including, as you say, Rule 144. But the, the, um, the interesting thing that we you know, first met, um, discussed when we first met, is the whole idea that um, Reg S um, imposes this uh, holding period under sales under Reg S. Uh, equity a year, just like Reg D, but for debt or the other stuff, 40 days. So you mobilize it 40 days and then it's free trading. So if you, the issuer, sell to a non-US uh, person, that person can sell to anyone outside the United States instantly, but after 40 days, well. That can yeah, be yeah. The way, um, if you want to rely on 904, then you'd ha um, you'd have to impose a 40-day um, distribution compliance period. It's called. But if you impose that, uh, then the presumption is at the end of that period, any trading that happens will will have an exemption or not be subject to the U.S. securities laws. So let's take a practical example in the crypto space. You're doing a launch pad on some exchange. That launch pad typically is a one-way thing. People buy it, okay? They wait 40 days, then it goes on the exchange. And basically this exchange can take US Americans onto the exchange because it's been 40 days. And the idea is if you're no longer selling as the issuer, then the only people who could sell on there are the people who either bought it years ago and they held right. it for years or these non-US people. Right. Although the one the one thing I should flag there is that you know you've got two separate sets of securities laws here. You have the um, the, the the Securities Act of 1933, which deals with the issuance of securities. You know, does the transaction need to be registered? And then you've also got the trans the uh, issue of um, regulation of intermediaries, you know, broker dealers, or alternative trading systems or exchanges, and uh, an exchange that does, even though the securities themselves might be free trading, uh, if you've got Americans doing that free trading on your exchange, you've triggered the jurisdiction of the US. So you better comply with, um, you know, you better be a registered broker dealer or ATS or exchange. So, so I, yeah, I think uh, I want to keep this uh, discussion more about the issuers. And the reason yeah. is because so many people are coming up with new concepts and new smart contracts that they're putting on the blockchain. And it seems to me that, and I'll just uh, spend a couple minutes on this, the, the platforms for secondary trading, and in fact, the blockchains themselves are operated by entities which are either overseas or for some reason or another are so decentralized that the U.S. government has not, at least I haven't heard, of them going after anyone. Um, Just wait. 
<laughs> so the first the first thing I, I'd like to mention is Uniswap and PancakeSwap, okay? These are not blockchains. These are smart contracts running on blockchains. And the thing about smart contracts is even if you find the company behind Uniswap and you tell them you're running a, an unregistered exchange or whatever, guess what? Those smart contracts will always be on that blockchain as long as that blockchain is there. The smart contract will operate exactly for years, for decades, the same way. So you could get rid of the company, but the SEC has no way to stop people from creating the liquidity pools and the other things to trade. So what, what do you think of that? Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's an area that the SEC is going to get interested in. Um, and, and one of the things that I would always advise is, um, and we've talked about this, um, the SEC has got this thin hub thing, which is kind of like, you know, bring us your issues. Let's talk them through. Um, and, and I think that's some of the, the conversations that should be being had right now with respect to the exchanges and whether a smart contract can sort of like give birth to itself in a way so that it's its own issuer um, and under what circumstances it might not be regulated because I know this is a conversation we've had. It's like, uh, do you get the issuer exemption for that? We don't know because, you know, look, <laughs> look at uh, the, the definition of issuer from like the 1930s and then try applying it to this. We have no idea. So yeah. those things do need to go uh, to the uh, to the experts over at FinHub at the SEC. Um, so I uh, this is you, yeah, this you is do not know fascinating gray area for me. Yeah, and, you know, it's just like with the Jobs Act where they push the, the boundaries. Here, to me, it's not even about the ivory tower definition of whether it is or isn't. It's the fact that once they've decided it is, like we've seen this with the Dow, the De decentralized mm -hmm. autonomous organization. They said, yeah, it's securities, but we can't do anything because there's no one to go after, and most importantly, there's no way to shut it down. Yeah, so, it's 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 a very similar issue there. Know, thing things that create themselves. I mean, it's it's like you know, the the uh, Sky, Skynet has become uh, sentient and it's issuing its own securities. And you know, what's the SEC going to do about it? I don't know. My yeah, answer yeah. is take it to FinHub. So that's why when it comes to blockchains and when it comes to these decentralized things, I think I want to leave that to the side. The only other thing I'll mention is that Binance Smart Chain, uh, which copied Ethereum, it's essentially, uh, I should say, running the same code as Ethereum, uh, and it's compatible with Ethereum, which is really good because it attracts all of those uh, smart contracts and projects. But it's a fair bit more centralized and it's under the control of one company, similar to how Facebook would have like 16 different organizations, but you know who they are. Yeah. They're not nameless miners somewhere in China or you know yeah. Iceland or something getting geothermal energy. So because they're under the control of, let's say this pyramid, let's say there's someone at the top. It's an interesting question of what is, the SEC has so far done nothing and neither has FinCEN or anybody and billions of value are being transferred on Binance Smart Chain. And one could argue that it's under the control of Binance or whatever. And uh, so unlike Ethereum, which they have said is decentralized, it's an open question of, Mm -hmm. What will they think about this? And I think so far they are letting it happen. Yeah, and, uh, well, you know, to go back to what I said earlier, I mean, the, the SEC operates in geologic time, um, but I would um, I, I would like to emphasize that Gary Gensler, who's taking has just taken over, um, actually teaches blockchain or taught blockchain, um, and so uh, I think we might see some kind of certainty. Um, because you've got a chairman who actually understands this world. So um, maybe we will get some kind of, um, some kind of reading. The, the problem is that, you know, the SEC, even when it operates fast, is still reacting to things that happened previously. Um, and so the world will have gone on to some completely different instrument that is created in a completely different way while the SE still is, is still trying to work out, well, you know, it is, is, uh, is a DX, what is it? And um, you see this with Ripple where it went back it, seven years, uh, you know, and I think with even yeah. the, the US Congress does this with uh, Facebook where they said the acquisition of uh, WhatsApp 
or the acquisition of uh, Instagram was maybe monopolistic. And it has yeah, people are still criticizing like Tumblr. I was just like, really? <laughs> Does it still yeah. exist? Yeah, anyway. I, <laughs> yes, yeah. They're, they're worth, worth $2.3 million, I believe, now. after, But, but, that, but that's the problem. I mean, you know, the, the world moves on much faster than the regulators can catch up. What about the other way? The regulators in the Jobs Act created regulation crowdfunding. And I haven't touched on this, but I just wanted to kind of say, I think it's almost the other way. People haven't realized that Reg CF is a great way to put your coin or token in the hands of many people. Absolutely. Why aren't there more, shall we say, um, I know Republic does this. Repub I Republic has a lot of, you know, fintech, crypto, um, some of it, some of the others uh, haven't, um, and I, I don't think that's in general a, a policy view because uh, most of the uh, the uh, crowdfunding portals can actually um, deal with you know both in terms of issuance and in terms of payment in you know, crypto in general. Um, Is there any requirement, maybe because of like you need cap table management by Carta, you need some sort of like. Well, you do agent. you do need you do need a transfer agent, but you know there are transfer agents who use the blockchain. I mean, they don't necessarily. So, Corconex uh, um, has um, you know their, their own pro, uh, proprietary that they're using Fabric, I think. Um, but um, yeah, there's, there's no reason that RegCF shouldn't be used um, by crypto more, and and why it hasn't been used because a, a lot of I was looking you know a few years back all of the airdrops that people did you could have done that under RegCF it would have been really simple to do without violating the securities law which they kind of did. What, what, by the way, as a subtle point, what exactly is the problem? Why is the SEC trying to protect people from free stuff? What exactly? Oh, well, the SEC never reckons that anything is free because from, uh, from the SEC's point of view, they take, uh, and this is like contract law, not securities law. Uh, they believe that there is consideration. That is, you have paid a price by doing a thing. If you do a thing and get um, a security. Suppose, suppose you do nothing. You just have If an you do nothing, then, then you're not getting anything. You have to do the thing. You have to push in. You have to press the button to say yes. Put it in my wallet. That is doing a thing, um, and therefore that is taking action, even if you would have done it otherwise. Um, and you have paid consideration, and therefore you know there was a sale of securities. Let's see. This and is that's, that's what the libertarian uh, libertarians would say, and I would agree with them here. <laughs> is that I think this is where the letter of the law becomes too crazy. It's like those uh, videos in Britain where they. Literally, it's so laughable, in my opinion, where they have drone videos of people in a park by themselves hiking during the coronavirus. And they're saying they're shaming people. This is not essential. Uh, going to the forest. This is not essential. But it's like, yeah, it's not essential. But that's not the, the point of the law isn't to ban all non-essential things. It's to make sure people don't congregate in a crowd. Similarly here, pressing a button, I mean, presents no danger <laughs> to a person. <laughs> I'm going to push you back on two things that the hiking in the UK, which is where I'm from. Um, yeah, please. <laughs> if, if, if you go, if you go hiking um, and you fall down a mountain, which people frequently do in my part of the world and somebody needs to rescue you, uh, then, you know, you, you are putting people at risk. So I'm, so, so I'm going to <laughs> make, make that point. But, but the more serious point is um, uh, the SEC has, Securities law has never believed that there is anything such as a free security because it, that um, there's always some sort of hype built on top of whatever it is you're doing. And, and we can look back to, um, to the days in the 1990s when there was a beer company that was handing out stock certificates with its beer. So you buy a six pack, you pay for the six pack, you get the, the, um, the security alongside. The SEC is like, you paid for the beer, even if you were going to do that anyway, that is consideration. And of course the company was in fact doing it for the publicity. They were getting something out of it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna push against the libertarian side there. Yeah, I'm just gonna say to represent the libertarian for a second, the publicity, that came at no expense of the person who received that. If they pressed a button, 
that's not exactly what the SEC should be in the business of protecting them against. Oh, the, your finger is sore. You press the button. If you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe and then remember to click the little bell icon so you get notifications. Wintercoin, making crypto mainstream.